Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to the debate for Select Board here in Arlington uh, in the 2020 race. Um, that's two positions open and three candidates. And those candidates join me right now um, in the order in which they appear in the ballot. Uh, it is Len Leonard Diggins and then Diane Mahan and then Micaiah Healy. Uh, welcome to you all. Um, I also want to just mention at the outset uh, that Len is a colleague of ours at ACMI. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over the format for the debate. The candidates are familiar with it, but I will just uh, quickly go over it for our audience. Um, we're going to start with opening statements, um, randomly, the order of which will be randomly chosen, um, and uh, we will, they will each be one minute. Then we will proceed to the first of uh, several rounds of questions. Uh, the first round is just one question, and it is going to be the same question asked to all three of the candidates, and each of them gets two minutes to respond. We'll then move to the next section, um, which will involve us and me specifically randomly choosing three questions from out of uh, the mason jar there, um, and then directing those to each of the candidates in turn. Um, the respondent will get two minutes, the, the person I asked the question of will get two minutes to respond, and then the other two candidates will have one minute for rebuttal time. We will then move into a quick section of yes-no questions, uh, six of those, um, and then followed by the opportunity that the candidates have to ask questions of each other. Um, and I will explain that um, when we get to that section, how that is going to work. And finally, um, we will close with closing statements. Surprise. Um, those are also one minute each. And again, the order for those will have been randomly chosen. So we would like to start. I will tell you that, as I mentioned before, randomly chosen order for the opening statements is Makai Healy, followed by Leonard Diggins, and then Diane Mahan. So Without further ado, let's get going. One minute for your opening statement, Ms. Healy. Thank you. My name is Micaiah Healy. I'm very happy to be with you, James, and the folks at ACMI and my fellow candidates. I am running for select board because I believe I can bring a unique perspective to the leadership in town. I'm a parent of three young children, a woman of color, a renter. I'm eager for the challenge and I really want to help lead our community uh, forward on issues that affect us all, such as housing, the environment, sustainability, and public trust, all through the lens of inclusion, equity, kindness, and respect. Over the 10 years I've lived in Arlington, I have developed an, an extensive network in the town, and I will use my professional training as a pastor, mental health counselor, and community organizer to lead our community forward. I am a bridge builder for people who don't ordinarily get along. People trust me to share their concerns about town matters. And because of that, I will bring a fresh perspective to the select board. Thank Thanks you. very much. Mr. Diggins. Hi, my name is Leonard Diggins, and I am very happy and honored to be running for a seat on select board. I'm also a, a proud town meeting member from Precinct 3. I guess now isn't the time for modesty. So if I were to list all of my involvement in the community, in respect to committees and groups, it would take way longer than the 60 seconds that, that we have here. But what I really want to emphasize is, is the extent to which I have a great working relationship with the current members of the select board, the town manager, many people on staff, and indeed a lot of the town, uh, other town meeting members. It, it is one thing to have connections, and I have plenty of those in town and across the region, but more importantly, uh, we need to have someone that is able to collaborate. Uh, I have my passion, which is to make a bring about more civic engagement, but more importantly, I want to work on whatever challenges Thank you very much. Me. We're going to have to, um, we're going to have to finish there. Ms. Mahan. Thanks, James and uh, ACMI. I truly want to thank Micaiah and Len. In this current season, running for an election is hard enough, but uh, running in the middle of a pandemic, uh, you know, thank you both for doing that. I'm Diane Mahan. I'm currently the select board chair. I am running for re-election, and uh, I'm hoping uh, at the end of this hour, I would have earned one of your two votes for the June 6th local election, which will have the voter mail-in option. Uh, I started out basically in schools with my kids, 
only wanted to be on PTO, voted for other people, signed their papers, then started to get involved when I saw some town decisions that were being made that really didn't reflect things. And I have a knack for um, getting different people together, organizing for positive effect, positive change, and, and then it's seeing it through. Um, and I want to continue to do that in um, my job. My role as selectman affords me a better opportunity to go out and dedicate myself to the community and get that job done. Thank you very much. And we're gonna move into that first round of questions, which is a single question uh, posed to all three candidates. Um, the order of response um, is going to follow the order on the ballot. So that is Mr. Diggins will go first, then Ms. Mahan, and finally Ms. Healy, each with two minutes to respond to this. Um, we have heard uh, from the public that uh, that there's real uh, interest, very deep interest in being able to distinguish between you guys. And so in, the, in light of that, what specific accomplishments, experience, values, or priorities distinguish you from the other candidates? Mr. Diggins. So in my case, we, my, my regional, um, I have lots of connections across the region. I've been involved in transit since uh, 2004 when I became a member of the Rider Oversight Committee. And I currently am a member of, I'm the chair of the Regional Transportation Advisory Council, uh, which has a seat on the Boston MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization. And we program $2 billion worth of federal surface transportation dollars over a 20 year period. I have lots of connections across the region, and, and I have come to appreciate the extent to which Arlington is seen as a leader in the region, and I have the ability to enhance and magnify that, that leadership role, because that's going to be very important in this situation, in this environment in which we find ourselves. Even before COVID-19, it, it was important for Arlington to play its leadership role, because that's how Arlington gets what it wants, I mean, in collaboration with the rest of the region, because Arlington it sits inside of a very vibrant, vibrant region. And in most other places, I mean, Arlington would be a neighborhood in the town that is, the major town that is five miles away. I mean, and so we need to be able to play our part in helping the region move along, because that's the way that Arlington will grow and become a more vibrant community. In this age of COVID-19, or in this era where we're dealing with COVID-19, that's even more important. So that ability to reach outside of Arlington in order to make Arlington stronger and better is what I bring to the table. Thank you, sir. Ms. Mahan. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I think what distinguishes me, um, obviously, is you know I am an incumbent. I have been on the board since 1999. Um, I never dreamed I'd be still on the board um, and still have the same passion and vigor for it. Uh, with the untimely passing of my colleague and friend, Kevin Grayley, I'm now the senior member. Um, and anyone who knows me or knows of me, um, I always do research. I read things uh, and I, I apply them to Arlington in the, the way that they need to be done. I have experience. I have relationships, um, you know, with all of our legislators and all the way up to Catherine Clark and, and Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey. But the most important relationship and strength that I think I have is I am devoted to constituent services. I'm devoted to helping people, to helping out. Because when I moved here in Arlington and we couldn't afford a house and eventually had to live in the projects, which we found out later was called Monotomy Manor. It wasn't when I was there getting the block of cheese. Arlington has been so good to me uh, in terms of growing up, the education it provided for me, but also the Arlington family, the Arlington community family. And I have de dedicated a large part of my life to doing that uh, because I want to give back what um, has been given to me. And there's so many other opportunities. Um, I, I hope one of the other questions will let me go into it, but my parlay into politics was um, just recently after its town leaders closed for elementary schools, they were talking about closing two more, Brackett and Pierce. And I was astounded by that. And then when I found out the reason, it didn't make any sense. It wasn't a rational reason. Uh, closing you know, schools when families were moving in. But more importantly, it would have eliminated, entirely eliminated the Metco program at Pierce School, which I am very much uh, a supporter of and have been from the onset. But I got my organizing skills, got all these people with energy and knowledge, got the information out to people, and eventually it went down to no school would be closed. And thank goodness we have the Arlington we have today. Thank you very much. 
And Ms. Healy. Um, yes, uh, so our perspectives make us different uh, candidates. Our experiences make us different people and therefore our priorities um, also are different. Um, so I, so there's a couple of things that I'm really excited um, to be working on and to bring to the board and bring to the Arlington community. Um, one of those things is accessibility um, to the public. Uh, and it's something, you know, I call giving the board um, some fresh air. So it's just my way of describing getting the board out into the community more to engage the public where, we, where they are. Um, I already do that as a leader in the diversity task group. Um, I have been seen as a coach primarily. Um, I coach a lot of leaders through difficult problems. Um, but really what I am excited to be doing um, these days is to have, uh, to be out there more, to have regular office hours, um, going to um, places where busy people are, you know, um, and just being more accessible to the, to the community. Um, you know, I grew up here. I mean, I didn't grow up here, but I, I spent um, 10 plus years um, trying to figure out how to, uh, or just building relationships with uh, lots of different neighbors. Um, and, uh, in, you know, in the diversity task group, I've been, it's just been such a privilege to be able to work on various projects to move our community forward um, in, in very specific way, like equity ways. Um, when I first became the chair, we worked on um, monotony um, or colonial day and, uh, and we moved that to monotony day um, just to reflect more of uh, the perspectives of people who didn't um, grow up um, as European Americans um, in this country. Um, you know, the culturally sensitive approach, approach to uh, the overnight parking, um, I was really excited to be doing that. So just bringing more perspectives to the board. Um, that's, that's, that's what I'm excited to do. All right, thanks very much. We're going to move right into the next section of questions. And these, again, uh, will be picked as we go by me out of this little mason jar. Um, and the person I direct the question to will have two minutes, and then the other two candidates, one minute rebuttal time. So the first question is directed to Ms. Mahan, and it is. <clears throat> How would you characterize the select board's response to the Lieutenant Padrini incident and specifically in reference to community input? Um, I would say uh, the response to the Lieutenant Padrini incident um, was a difficult time um, and uh, I hope from the get-go that you heard the remarks from the board and the town manager that um, uh, we uh, spoke out against the vile racist um, vitriol that uh, Lieutenant Pendrini penned in um, his writings. Uh, in no way were they a reflection of the town. And um, I actually felt um, really um, embarrassed uh, by the incident. Um, I felt sorry for our town employees, the women and men of the police department. Um, that this also affected them. I also was chair at the time. Um, and that's when um, Arlington fights racism, as well as some other citizens uh, came to the select board meeting where um, I had three uh, citizens open forums where they came in and um, aired some things that the town needed to hear, that the town needed to listen and process. And then the town and the board needed to come up with a way to address this. Um, because it really was something that was, was and is serious. Uh, racism does exist. Um, it, uh, sometimes the worst is when people don't realize that, that they're out there, that there could be systemic racism. And then the st uh, steps that the town mo took moving forward, hearing from residents as well as members from AFR, um, hiring uh, someone from National League of Cities, as well as we had uh, leaders from AFR help come up with um, who the person would be that was chosen. Um, and we still have more to do. And I want to stress that because this is an issue that thankfully AFR brought to the town's attention and, and it needs to be discussed. It needs to be ongoing discussions and again, make a positive. Thank, thank you very much. Ms. Healy, you have one minute for rebuttal. Um, sure. I was personally affected by the writings of Lieutenant Padrini. Um, it was, I was very disturbed by the statements that he made, let's meet violence with violence. 
um, because that attitude um, carries with it this fear that it's going to be followed up with action. Um, and then that those fears would also are shared among um, other members of the police department. Um, and so I sat in dozens of circles in office rooms, in living rooms and meeting spaces for the past two years um, talking about this issue um, and willing to move to work to understand and how to help heal and to restore our community. Um, and I think there's a lot of work that still needs to be done um, that was mentioned. Um, and because of all of this uh, work that has been done, I've actually gained some of the most deepest relationships with um, the, the town department, the police department, and um, members of the Arlington Fights Racism Group. Thank um, you very much. And Mr. Diggins, your minute. Sure. So the, the primary question was, how did the select board handle it? And having watched that play out, I understood the rationale uh, behind the town manager's actions, Gene, and, and I understood why the select board supported his actions Gene, and decided to allow for the use of, of um, restorative justice. It, it, I support that and I understand that there are still challenges that members of the community face with respect to uh, how things are continuing to play out with Lieutenant Vedrini and I feel that we do need to continue working on that but I want to work on that from the perspective or from the notion of bringing getting people to know each other better because I feel that racism is a is another level of another example of people just not getting to know each other well enough. I think if we get people Thank you. to- Sorry to okay. have to cut you off, but I do. Sure. Uh, and moving on to the next question. This is directed to you, Ms. Healy. <clears throat> so Arlington faces a number of challenges in the coming years. What area or issue would you take a particular leadership role in tackling? That's a, a great question. I think um, the biggest thing that we have coming up um, is just our fiscal um, recovery from the crisis. Um, so both in terms of the stability of the town's budget shortfalls um, and people's fears of just being able to live, um, to afford to live here in town. Uh, people have the basic necessities of uh, a fear of food, water, and shelter, um, and safety. Um, I think there's going to be more dependency on aid organizations, um, and um, and I really want to see how our town can continue to work um, with the community to encourage these aid organizations. Um, this is why we care so much about um, why we fund Arlington um, Arlington Eats Market, um, and we care for uh, COA and. Um, lots of other places. And I would just encourage the generosity of town residents to continue to do, um, to, to give grants to the homelessness prevention um, program where there's grants that, um, that keep people within, um, within the homes to pay for their rents. They provide those grants. I'm very appreciative of the um, HCA for doing that, uh, the Housing Corporation of Arlington. So um, I prioritize mostly um, those who are on fixed incomes and those with disabilities, um, those that have less financial security and um, cushion that will, it'll take a, a lot harder for them to bounce back from this recovery. Uh, people who have lost their jobs. Um, and as much as we can prevent displacement, as, um, as much as we possibly can, that is uh, where I want to, to work and to, to um, to support our community um, and to, to lead our community through this crisis. And, you know, as bad as this crisis is for us, um, I believe that through uh, resilience and through this challenge, um, through this challenge, we'll develop resilience and um, that our town will, thank will you. work together. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Diggins, one minute. Yes, I mean, well, I agree a lot with what Mikai said, and I want to extend that uh, a little more generally to making Arlington more equitable and creating a more uh, more sustainable way of living because I mean, as bad as this COVID situation is, I mean, I mean, the climate uh, cha climate change is even bigger I mean, and we weren't maybe aware of what was going, that a pandemic was, was probable, but we do know that climate change 
is happening and we need to work I mean, with the region and the rest of the world, but really get our house in order with respect to doing what we can to make living more sustainable. And we need to do that in a way that fosters equity I mean, and, and makes opportunities available to everyone so they're not simply surviving, they're thriving. Thank you very much. And Ms. Mahan, your minute. Thank you very much. Um, what I want to do is, what I think is one of my attributes, is continue to be a leader and leading Arlington um, through the uh, coronavirus and, and the effects. And a lot of it is the unknown. And I've been working with the town manager, with nonprofit groups, about how can we get money to people who know what five dimes and ten nickels means. Um, so to that end, uh, and we have uh, money through CDBG CARES Act. I championed that very strongly uh, to make it just for low income. We also have the COVID-19 relief fund that Arlington has started. And I spoke with the town manager and we decided whatever grant you apply for, it applies to the other one. So people aren't bogged down with which one did I apply. We have relief for small businesses in Arlington that we vitally need. They're part of the community as well as the economic community. Um, and I also want to work on making sure people feel safe about their housing because there's been some stories out there and there are protections for people. So I want to lead and get that information out. Thank you. And the third and final question of this round, uh, surprise goes to you, Mr. Diggins. And it is. Uh, current select board member Joe Curo made a recent public plea for civility. What do you think is the best way to deal with inconsiderate words or actions and with public disagreement? Well, you know, civility. It, uh, it's, 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 it's an issue not only in Arlington, uh, it's all over the place. And I think the key to it really is, once again, we to get people to know each other better because it's easy to be uncivil towards someone that you see as the other. See, but if we get people more connected be, so that they get to see that they have more in common be, than there are differences, be, then I think it, it will foster a more civility because you don't really behave badly towards someone that you get to know. And, and usually when you get to know someone, you get to like them because you see the similarities in them. So I want to work, I mean, as I have done, to try to get people interacting with each other more. I mean, I've done that in conjunction with Envision Arlington by getting the precinct meetings going. And that really is a guise me for getting the community more connected. I mean, I do it around the rubric, or we organize around the rubric of, of the warrants, you know, or the articles in the warrant, but it's really a way of getting people in the room together. Uh, and also, it'd be good to try to practice democracy in a way that doesn't really exacerbate the differences. I, mean, I know we have a race, and it's all about saying, well, how is this candidate different from the other? And it's like, yeah, there are differences. We want you to choose amongst us, but also just realize that we're all trying to work together towards making the community better. So, Perhaps the discussions in these races should be more about how would you work together I mean, to solve the problems that we have. So it's more a matter of, of our approach to things and also language. I mean, and so uh, we may have things that we want to work on, but instead of maybe saying that we're fighting an issue, it's like, how is it that we are working towards solving that issue? So language and bringing people together. Thank you. We are going to go to you, Ms. Pahan, for one minute. Yes, uh, having having the unique position of actually being chair this past year, um, I can say in all my years um, in Arlington, I've, I've really never seen the uh, level of public public discourse um, to this extreme. Uh, to, to that end, I, I will have an agenda item on May 18th, following up on what Joe Kiro spoke about in his new business and ask him um, to bring those ideas back from the MMA. I have spoken with leaders of the group um, that have appeared before, to, before us, because I've worked on charge neighborhood environmental issues, but I've always said to the people that are in the group, especially who are gonna speak on behalf of the group, please be mindful, please be respectful, respectful of the process. Um, even if things don't go um, that way, sometimes you have to accept that um, 
and even when people say, you know, we offer an apology, we did that wrong, we're trying to make it better, you need to accept that on face value. And, and I, we need to find out how we get back to that and then not make it that some people can't even watch select board meetings anymore, which is sad. Thank you very much. Ms. Healy, one minute. Important to distinguish uh, between civility and agreement. Uh, we have a diverse town and we're going to have varying opinions and we're going to have lots of disagreements. So my definition of civility is being able to discuss those strong differences in a way that is respectful of others. So that even when I disagree with you, I can still respect you at the end of the conversation. So it's when that respect starts to wane, that civility dwindles. And that's when you see more personal attacks aimed at uh, people rather than a, a position that you're holding. Uh, one thing I learned as a counselor is that I can't control what others do or they say. Um, and the other thing that I learned is that when someone feels validated, uh, that's more important than agreeing with them. Uh, when I facilitate meetings at the, in the diversity task group, we don't always agree. Um, most of that learning that happens though in DTG is when we're able to hear concerns and ask questions of one another, uh, lean into presumptions, and then- Thank um, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> okay, we're gonna now move into the uh, Next section questions, uh, which are going to be a series of yes and no questions. I want to preface this uh, by acknowledging that these are not easy uh, for the candidates to answer. I'm sure there will be a temptation and a frustration uh, around not being able to explain yourself further. But we want to cover a number of different topics at least uh, a little bit. And so we'd appreci we appreciate uh, your indulgence uh, around our requirement that you answer yes or no and not something else. Uh, you sure. will also have a short time to deliberate for yourselves, uh, uh, you know, five to 10 seconds, but then we're going to be looking for an answer. Okay, and um, it's going to move pretty quickly and we'll just, you'll get used to the rhythm of how that goes. We're going to start sure. with the first question is going to go to Ms. Mahan first and then Ms. Healy and then Mr. Diggins, and we will carry on in rotating order from there. So <clears throat> the first question is, is potential flooding at the Mugar development in East Arlington a solvable problem? Yes, no development. Ms. Healy? Yes, no development. Uh, yeah, I agree, uh, no development. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, the next question goes to you, Ms. Healy, then Mr. Diggins, then Ms. Ma. <clears throat> uh, do you support all four points of the platform being advanced by Arlington Fights Racism? Ms. Healy. Uh, no, not entirely. Okay. Uh, no, especially the fourth one. Okay. No. Thank you. And moving on to the next question, uh, order will be Mr. Diggins, Ms. Mahan, and Ms. Healy. And so it will go. <clears throat> Should Arlington consider reversing its current ban on overnight parking? Yes. Did you hear that? Yes? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Did, so after that, Ms. Mahan? Yes. And Ms. Healy. Yes. Okay. Next question. This is going to you. But we're back to the where we were at the beginning. Ms. Mahan, Ms. Healy, and then Mr. Diggins. Do you support zoning bylaw changes to facilitate new business in Arlington, such as, for example, the proposed Hotel Lexington on Mass Ave? Ms. Mahan. Um, yes. Explore it. And Ms. Healy? Yes, I'm for it, that. Yes, I'd like to see biotech. All right, and next question is to you, Ms. Healy, then Mr. Diggins, then Ms. Mahan, and it is, would you agree to pursue the regionalization of certain services in order to save money for the town? Uh, yes, it depends, though. <laughs> yeah, okay, qualified yes. And Mr. Diggins? Yes, yes, I like to jump up and down. 
And Ms. Mahan. Oh. Yes, explore it. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, you'll probably be happy to note uh, that the last question um, is, um, and I'm sorry, um, the order for uh, this last question, just to refresh your memories, uh, will be Mr. Diggins, Ms. Mahan, and Ms. Healy. And the question itself is, do you support zoning policies that would promote increased population density in Arlington? Yes. And Me? Oh, yes. <laughs> and Ms. Healy. Yes, qualified yes. It depends. Thank you very much. <laughs> Again, we appreciate your patience with that. Um, we're awesome. going to move on to the fourth and final section, questions. Um, and these, uh, here's where we invite you to ask questions of each other. So uh, just a reminder, you get 30 seconds to ask the question. So no speeches, just a question, please. Um, and then each of the two respondents will get two minutes and the person who asked the question will get one minute to respond to those. So we will start with you, Ms. Healy. Wow. And uh, it, the order of, uh, of response will be Mr. Diggins and then Ms. Maha. Can you tell us a little bit about your perspective about the Civilian Review Board um, uh, and the uh, Chief Advisory Board? Sure. Yeah, so I, I am fine with the notion of exploring whether a Civilian Review Board I mean, should be established. I don't, what I don't support in the current article is the notion that it will be studied with the intention of setting it up. I mean, I'm the sort of person that likes to explore possibilities and in the process maybe change my mind about the, what, is, what conclusion comes about. Um, the Police Advisory Committee, I love that concept because I want that to happen regardless made of what we do uh, with respect to the Civilian Review Board because I would like to see such an entity have broad powers or broad, a broad agenda so that we get people to know the police more and the police get to know the community more because it isn't simply a slogan when I talk about me making connections. I think that's vital I mean, to everything. And the more we can do to get people to know each other and understand each other, just the more vibrant and resilient the community will be, will be. So I'm all for that police um, advisory group or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Are, are you finished or? I'm, I'm finished. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Mahan. Two minutes. Yes, and, and thank you, Micaiah, for the question. And I understand you're pausing because the <laughs> past three weeks I keep thinking, what question can I ask? I don't want to ask a mean question. I don't want to ask a, you know, try to trip you up a question kind of a thing. Um, so, but, but thank you for your question. Um, we did have a Warren article hearing, which I was not in favor of the language that was contained in the Warren article hearing. But one of the things I love about being on the select board and having these Warren article hearings, sometimes we find uh, a way to do something that everybody wants, but it's a different way. And uh, I've been working with our police chief, Julie, Julie Flaherty, uh, when she came up with the uh, Citizens Advisory Board. We're both so excited about that because, you know, I like to take something and see the opportunity in it because I think that's the way you take something and make it less charged and make it work for everybody. And um, looking forward to the schedule and having the citizen advisory board because I really would like to use it to get out all the good work that the women and men of the Arlington Police Department have been doing from 911 dispatch all the way up. And if something does come along, as we experienced um, last year with Lieutenant Pedrini, we have a committee set up that's meeting with the chief that have, have built trust and respect. Um, but <clears throat> I wanna do this as everything else that I do in Arlington when there's an issue uh, a, pr a problem, something lacking, somebody needs something that we sort of galvanize around it and say, let's, you know, let's make positive change out of this. Let's not see this as punitive or, you know, everything is wrong, but that I think this is a great opportunity and uh, honest to goodness, the police chief and I are so excited about it because we are going to make sure the citizen advisory committee is so enmeshed, not only with the Arlington police department, but sort of as stewards to the community. And they could be stewards when there are things like, like racism that need to be discussed. They'll sort of be people out there um, doing what we do here in Arlington, which is come together and take care of each other. 
Thank you very much. And Ms. Healy, you have one minute to respond. Okay, thank you. Um, so I looked at the Chief's Advisory Board, um, which is very in, in line with the way that um, I think that our Chief runs. It's very sacrificial and very um, full of servitude. I think it focuses the department, um, it focuses on how the department can improve and it places a lot of the responsibility um, of rebuilding public trust within the department itself and also on the advisors of um, the advocates um, that are part of that board. Um, the Citizens Advisory Board, I think, focuses a lot on the citizens um, and how they might examine public issues and conduct research and development recommendations. Um, and I think both models provide our community with what we need, actually. So I would recommend a formal um, way of having our um, an independent mechanism where citizens can bring their complaints outside of the department um, and also um, also provide recommendations to the, the chief, which is what um, she's desiring as well. Thank you. Next question uh, is posed by Mr. Diggins and the order of response will be Ms. Mahan and then sure. sure, well, mine was easy because as I've stated repeatedly, I'm really into uh, connecting the community. Right? And so in the spirit of collaboration, right, I'm interested in your ideas right, about what you, what you think more we could do right, to get more civic involvement uh, and, and create right, just more bonds, more relationships with the community. Ms. Mahan. Um, I think what we can, well, pre March 12th coronavirus, um, certainly build on and continue on what um, the board has been doing. Um, certainly for myself, you would be hard pressed to find anyone who said they didn't have an opportunity to meet with me, talk to me on the phone. Sometimes we're really long on the phone. Um, I always made myself available in, in coffee shops. I'm known for constituent services. And I, my, when I first got on the board, I remember my then colleague saying, Oh, that person that appeared before us and asked for some help, they don't vote, they're not registered. And my thing was having come from a, a family like that, um, well, it, make it your job you, to go out there and help these people. And when they see them one time they had a positive result with their town government, then they say, hey, geez, I didn't know this went on. And I've seen those people go on to become involved in the community, to be great participants into making Arlington better. And I think um, what I want to do is continue on with what I've been doing um, since 1999, I can't believe I'm that old, is really listening to people, respecting them, helping them just to help. You know, there's nothing worse that when you ask for some help and then you see it, you know, being discussed at a meeting that, you know, you needed help with rent or uh, fuel oil assistance. Um, I like to just do everything quietly. A lot of people have said to me, you know, you really should let people know everything that you're doing. Well, I do. And I tell them I'm doing my best job um, in my role as selectman, which affords me the opportunity to get my job done better, which is getting people help, whether it's information, whether it's something because of family circumstances, station in life, a town employee. Uh, uh, I, I really thrive on um i think i've for me developed uh to make myself as open as possible and one of my negatives and positive is i'll always tell you what i think i'm not going to tell you what i think you want to hear or make to make you go away and that's sometimes played against me but um i i just can't not tell you um yeah so this is a a very big concern for me um a very big priority for me um and uh, I am really interested in um, also just being present in the community. Um, I think accessibility um, is a big piece of a lot of what we're talking about, like within the boardroom. I think um, we lose um, civility within the boardroom because people don't feel like they're known by their board members. Um, and so I am very interested in having regular office hours, like I, I think I mentioned, in, um, and uh, Pairing up with, you know, the Human Rights Commission, they do these regularly. The school committee um, has these, our state delegates have office hours. So um, just being, uh, pairing up with, with, the, with that possibly, um, and also exploring new places like publicly trafficked places like um, the library and Arlington Housing Authority living rooms. And just being a presence is, is really important I know it's not all up to uh, one board to be able to do that, um, but I think uh, government should be accessible and, um, and people should know that um, if they have any issues that they can, what, they, what their representatives look like. Um, 
So I'm really also, I, I find leaders all the time. Um, I mentioned that I'm a coach and that I, I look for leaders all the time. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm interested in, in bringing along the new generation of people to fill in these committee seats and these commissions. I know the board does um, a, a points a lot um, of, of new members to these boards. And so, um, yeah, people, there's like newcomers, there's students that I'm um, connected to that Arlington High School that want to be involved. There's um, seniors who want to be engaged more. And so they can, be, they can participate as well. And so um, figuring out those ways to let them know how government works. Mr. Dickens, one minute to respond. Sure. Sure. Uh, well, I, I very much like the office uh, hours idea. You know, I would like to do that myself. Hopefully we'll get to back to the point where we can go out because I would like to visit various cof coffee shops um, and have my office hours there. And I'm very much into getting the next generation involved. And one of the things I mentioned uh, on my profile is that I'd like to explore <laughs> and maybe just do uh, create a youth and young adult advisory uh, committee meeting. And they, I have ideas for how they would be selected, but they would be a committee that has some real heft. Me, so, and the town would be committed to them and get them educated in the way the town works. I mean, so that maybe they could propose their own articles for the warrant because I think it's important that we get the next generation involved in local politics so that they understand how things work because we people my age are making policies for people who are going to be living a lot longer than we are and we need to get their buy-in and the way to get their buy-in is to get their involvement and get their input. Okay, and sorry, got to cut you off. Um, and so to the final question of this section and in fact of the debate, and it will be posed by Ms. Mahan and answered in order by Ms. Keeley and then Mr. Dickens. Ms. Mahan. Okay, like Micaiah, <laughs> this is the one that I was like, hey, why are you guys doing this? Uh, uh, but, but in the spirit of, um, I really want to uh, highlight to the voters what are the differences in, uh, in the candidates. Uh, if, if you are successful on June 6th and you're elected, um, could you just let the voters of Arlington know what, what you would accomplish in the first four weeks uh, as being a member of the board? The first four weeks, that's June. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, what we would be doing is uh, um, hopefully um, being a part of town meeting. And, uh, and so there's a lot of people that, um, there's 200 and some odd uh, people that I would love to thank personally um, for their uh, their encouragement and um, and I, I think just you know breathing fresh air and uh, you know my postcard is out there. Um, I think the pandemic will still be going on, and so um, I I just want to kind of reassure people too. I think people will just be um, more wanting to connect, and uh, and so I think it's it's kind of that time to both buckle down and to um, to reprioritize like what we uh, care about like in terms of um, people's uh, financial securities and the things that they're concerned about um, to just like really meet people one on um, face to face um, and uh, but also it'll be a, a form of connection too so yeah if it's June to July <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot of work that needs to happen um, I know there's a humongous manual that I will be reading um, and studying and continue to study. Um, but uh, yeah, the summer is usually kind of more relaxed, I think, um, in terms of board priorities. So it'll be a bit of learning, a bit of a leisure, and a bit, of, a bit of connection to others. Thank you. And Mr. Diggins, two minutes. First four weeks, I mean, that's so little time. I mean, uh, uh, so, so I mean, <laughs> so, so it's like, well, I mean, I mean well, we, we will have I mean, uh, an abbreviated town meeting, I hope. I mean, um, and so we'll be talking um, budget issues. I, mean, uh, I, I will certainly be uh, getting myself more uh, familiar with the hopefully background material on the articles uh, that were not heard yet because we will be in a rather unusual position where new uh, the new a new or two new uh, select board members will be hearing articles coming up for the upcoming um, town meeting. Normally, those are already heard by the select board. So uh, I look forward to reading that material. In fact, that's one of the reasons I really want to be a member of the select board because covering uh, the select board meetings, I just love 
the detail that went into uh, those meetings when it came to the hearings. And I knew there was more. Uh, so that was only hearing, seeing the tip of the iceberg at the hearings. It's like, I know there's more material and I want to read that material. So I want to, I really want to be able to delve into the articles more by getting access to that material. So, so that would be it. And, and of course, having um, um, talks with the town manager, uh, Adam and I already have a great relationship. And so I know he, there's a lot more to, um, understand about the town and and um getting up to nearly the speed that you are um miss mahan <laughs> okay and one minute rebuttal for you miss mahan can i get the leftover time they didn't use and i can have two <laughs> <laughs> um I, to me one day is like a year so four weeks sounds like you know in this groundhog new normal kind of day um if i am uh fortunate enough that the voters returned me back to, uh, to select board, um, what I would do is continue my work on the town meeting that we're planning to have at the high school field, but also have some remote capabilities for our town meeting members um, who do not feel safe, who are vulnerable, um, but still allow them to participate. I'm also going to where we are doing the budgets that we need to do month by month. I know the State House uh, spoken with uh, Senate President Karen Spilka about what the, they'll be coming out with um, to address. Do we continue going on budgets on a month to month basis or not? And also continuing getting all my um, um, efforts out for all the different forms of relief that are out there. There are so many. And in this time where people, we can't just depend on who has a laptop and who can pay the internet. We got to get the word out. All right. Thank you. All that remain their closing statements. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the order for both the opening and closing statements were randomly chosen. Um, this has happened before in this season, in fact, but it is unusual. We had the exact same order uh, for uh, the close, and that will be Ms. Healy, and then Mr. Diggins, and then Ms. Mahan. One minute each to you, Ms. Healy. Thank you. Special thanks to the ACMI staff and to all the viewers who are tuning in, um, my fellow candidates. Uh, your viewership demonstrates that you deeply care, as do I, about who is leading um, our town. You care about our characters, you care about um, our values in which we make our decisions. Um, and so just to reiterate things that I'm excited about, I'm excited to bring you a fresh perspective um, that uh, to round out the perspectives that you hear on the board on a regular basis. I'm excited about increasing accessibility to, um, to our residents and to building up um, more leaders. I'm excited about office hours and um, just getting to know um, board members and community in a deeper way. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in increasing communication and civility. Um, and I do hope that you, um, uh, I ask for one of your two votes um, on or before June 6th. I need your help. Um, this is an ongoing relationship. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Diggins. Yes, so I also want to thank ACMI. And since you are my colleagues, I know so much of what goes on behind the scenes. And so I especially want to thank Jake, um, Jeff, Katie, and Sean for their work. I also, uh, I enjoyed this meeting. And so I really appreciated the, the exchange of ideas and, and feelings and thoughts uh, with my other two um, candidates here. Uh, you know, you get inspiration from unexpected places at times. And in my case, it was last Saturday when I met with the kids uh, at um, Sunrise Arlington. And, uh, it was online, of course. And, and they are a group that is focused on climate change. And, and after asking them to join the efforts of Arlington Help to create these hyperlocal um, networking groups, one of the kids said, I'm so happy you joined us. I'm so excited about your campaign. And He's too young to vote for me, but it's that energy that I love seeing in someone that young who now knows about local politics. I want to take hey, that. Sorry, one last time. I had to cut you off. Sure. Ms. Mahan, your minute. Uh, thank you. Says me. Oh, I'm unmuted. Sorry. Oh, thank you to uh, ACMI, to my colleagues who are also running for this, to the voters out there. First, I respectfully request one of your two votes on June 6th. Hopefully a lot of you, most of you will use the voter mail-in um, postcard and vote by mail. Um, but of course, those who want to come out and come to the eight polling locations, I'm working on everything I can to keep you safe, to keep our 
work safe, and to make sure you can exercise that right. Um, the, the cards from the town, the official cards, um, will be in the mailboxes tomorrow. Please, if you, um, you can go on the web website, but if you're someone who needs another way to connect, you can always call the select board office, ask for me or any one of my colleagues at 781 316 3020. I'm out there in all types. If, if you can't find me, ask a neighbor. They'll tell you a way to get to me. There's lots of help out there. I want to give it to you, so please re-elect okay. me. And just like that, we are done. Um, the candidates said it very, very well themselves, and we appreciate it, but we have some thanks of our own. So um, we want to give thanks, first of all, to the three of you, to the candidates. Uh, thank you for participating for your patience and adaptability with the various things that can happen in this Zoom and COVID-19 world. Um, and thanks to my colleagues, our ACMI crew who are working behind the scenes um, quite prodigiously to pull all of this off uh, time after time. And finally, we also wanna thank you who, for tuning in, for taking the time to do so, to inform yourselves and in advance of the election that is scheduled uh, June 6th, and looks like it will be happening, in fact. Um, you can access, by the way, this current debate and the debates for other offices uh, that will take place over the coming weeks, as well as candidate profiles and candidate conversations upcoming uh, in any of several ways. They will be airing, and they are airing regularly on our government channel. They will continue to do so. You can also access them at your own convenience at our website, at acmi.tv slash elections. Lastly, you can also find some more useful information about the various candidates in the voter's guide on the Arlington League of Women Voters website at www.lwva.com. With one last thanks to our candidates, uh, you've been watching the 2020 debate for uh, the select board here in Arlington. I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us.